Hello, what's up YouTube, Ronnie Sweet and Actual and in this tutorial this is going to be more of a part 2 tutorial. I already did the part 1 for this and basically in the part 1 for this tutorial I already did the color grading for this and I show you guys how to process or how I did color grade this image in Capture and so the part 1 I'm going to link it right above here so that you guys can watch it later on if I told you have a time. And if I told you, would love to understand and learn about how I did the color grading of the skin tones for this image and how I managed to make this image really pop. So basically, I showed this using a one light setup. So on the right hand side, this side, it was the sun and my light was on the uh, left hand side and it was a Godox 8600 BM. So enough of that. Let me just show you guys how I usually edit half body or full portrait so for this case we're going to be dealing with half a portrait but you can use the same process for editing a full body portrait so for this case i'm just going to come and play my frequency separation action which is my 16-bit frequency separation action so you can see right here i have 16-bit and if i would love to purchase and get these actions make sure to click on the link in the description of this video so that you can support this channel for the content I give you guys for free I should say and also thank you for supporting by subscribing and watching the content so it is a two-way kind of thing so I'm just going to come right here and guys I have noticed that most of you guys tend to watch and you don't hit the like button so I'll ask you guys or request you guys to hit the like button on this video so that YouTube can push it to more people out there I'm just going to come the frequency separation 16-bit action and I simply play it and it is at this point where I determine the amount of detail that I want to remain with in the final image so for this case I'm just going to take the radius all the way down and click on uh, maybe the first area so this is the detail that we want so make sure to move this radius up to a point when the details in the first area are just starting to get lost so just come the radius and simply click and start moving so depending on how sharp or how much detail you have in your images this radius is going to be differing so you shouldn't cram it so i'm just going to move this radius up to a point when those details are just going to start getting lost so i think at five when i move around you can see i've lost out on the detail in this area so just come and hit ok and the action is just continue or it is just going to continue playing and let's just give it a few seconds because i have all i've loaded my photoshop it has really been working for some days now and it is quite faster on normal days so let's just give it a few seconds and the action has been or oh, it has completed playing and usually in my frequency separation action I usually have that kind of black and white layer which is more of a whole player so usually you can use the whole player to even out the skin tones remember skin retouching is more of evening out the skin tones in the image so I'm just going to come and uh, deactivate the black and white layer and the next thing I want to do usually when I'm doing skin retouching I prefer to also turn off the texture layer remember we usually have the colors, the middle layer and the texture layer in this action and the black and white layer. So what I do, I turn off the black and white layer and I also turn off the texture layer so that I can see the colors or skin tones of this past, uh, this image rather. So I'm just going to come to the mixer brush tool and for settings I prefer a clean brush. And make sure the second option is checked because we want the brush to be automatically cleaned as we're trying to even out different parts of a model's skin and the weight i prefer 9 percent load 75 mix 90 and the flow 100 make sure sample areas is not checked or ticked so after doing that i know other people usually prefer using 30 30 30 so depending on what you prefer to use as the person retouching that is up to you so i'm just going to come to sample areas and make sure this is not checked because when you tick this area it means that you're going to be also painting texture into the color layer so i'm just going to come and make sure the low frequency layer has been selected and highlighted 
And now zoom in command plus on the keyboard or control plus. And while using a mixer brush tool, I'm just going to blend or even out colors that look alike in the image. So I'm just going to left click and hold down and start painting. And as I'm doing this, you're going to notice that the image is going to turn out to look more of uh, a smudge or a painting. And it's going to look plastic as you're doing this because we have turned off the layer that is containing the textures and we're just working with the colors. That's why the colors can be altered and you can be seeing everything in real time. So I'm just going to be painting just like this as I'm trying to even out uh, the colors. So I'm basically using the mixer brush tool and in order to reduce on the size of the brush, you can use the box brackets on the keyboard to either decrease or increase on the size of uh, the mixer brush tool. So I'm just going to paint through just like that and come to the chin area. And usually for full body images, I don't do like so, so much trying to retouch because I know one may be no same person is going to zoom all the way in to look at the detail. It is more it is not like the close-up portraits whereby uh, the details are really in the face of a person going to look at the images. That's why we always take longer trying to retouch them and get our uh, doors out of the way. So just do less and you can take like uh, a very short time trying to even out the tones. So just come to the neck area and blend uh, these uneven skin tones just like that. So you can come and check on your progress by coming and turning on the texture layer and you can see your progress by simply clicking on the group to see what you have done. You can see the textures are still intact and when you zoom out you can see the image quite better. So before, after, before, after. So I'm just going to zoom in and work on the rest of the areas, for example the hands and part of uh, the legs. So I'm just going to turn this back off and come and even out these areas. So like I said, for full body images, I usually don't take a very long time trying to uh, retouch or work on them because uh, no one is going to look at it like for a long time like it is for the close-ups. I hope you have gotten my point anyway. So I'm just going to come and work on the fingers, just like that. Just trying to get even skin tones. Don't mind if at all it looks a little bit plastic, because we have just turned off the texture. So I'm just going to come to the legs and also work on them. Remember, this is more of a half or a full body portrait. So you can follow the same process or the same procedure as you're trying to work on your images. So like I said, my routine is more of color grading first, then I come to Photoshop and do a uh, skin retouching. And I could as well go back to the camera filter and do one more color grading and eye and teeth whitening. So basically that is what I do as I'm trying to work on images of this kind. So I'm just going to even out the tones just like that and come back and turn this back on. Command minus to zoom out to look at what we have so far. This is the before, after, before, after. So for the first area, I usually incorporate the second technique that is using the lasso tool. So come and get the lasso tool. Feathering, I prefer 22 pixels and make sure the first option is checked. And alias is selected and now you can zoom in and fine tune the face even more so. Come and make a selection on the face of the model just like that. So you have to keep away from the eyebrows and hair. And now come back to filter, blur, and come to Gaussian blur. Still selected on the low frequency layer. And now you can come and work on this quite better. So for this radius that we had, I usually multiply it by 3. So for this case, I'm just going to type in, remember we had 5 pixels. So I'm just going to multiply 5 by 3 which is 15 and just type in 15 and hit OK. And now just apply it onto the rest of uh, the model's face, just like that. So make a selection, right click and 
apply the Gaussian blur and if I told you, you have a shortcut for it it can be even better for you so I'm just going to come and apply it right here but when it comes to the legs rather I don't apply the same setting so when it comes to the legs right here because I want to fine tune that even better because there are areas where I don't work with my mixer brush tool for example the edges of a cloth you can see that line I usually come right here and make a selection on one part just like that and for the radius here I just multiply the radius that we had by 4 and to make this look better so just come to filter blur and come to Gaussian blur so remember we had radius of 5 so 5 by 4 I just multiply it and get 20 so just type in 20 and this is going to work for the legs of the model just like that so I usually do it for all my images and I use the same calculation and it is or it even works better for me so right click and come back to Gaussian blur just like that I hope you're learning and understanding every step or if at all you're missing out on anything just let me know down in the comment section so I'm just going to come to the high frequency layer and click on the high frequency layer and try eliminating or removing the blemishes or skin imperfections. So come and get my clone stamp tool. Make sure it is normal. I hope you can see the mod normal. Opacity at 100, flow at 100. And for the hardness, I prefer using a hardness of 39%. Sample, make sure current layer is selected because... We only want to work on this current layer and make sure aligned is also selected and now zoom in and remove these skin imperfections or blemishes command minus and you can increase on the size of your clone stamp tool by using the box bracket still so in order to copy and replace a blemish hold down the alternate click on the clean skin or the area with clean skin and simply left click and click over the blemish to eliminate it so I have so many tutorials about blemish removal and if I told you want to learn about that you can simply go through uh, the tutorials on this channel and you're going to be getting that in depth and learning about different tools you can use to remove blemishes so you can choose whichever tool that works best for you uh, to clean up or remove blemishes from your images uh, during or after skin retouching so I'm basically trying to clean up or remove these skin imperfections using my clone stamp tool so you can see that this is really getting better and you are achieving a nice results at the end of this tutorial so let's just clean up this and I think we are almost done so that you can do the final process for editing half or full body uh, portraits in Photoshop so I think this we are good to go command minus to zoom out so I think we are done with that so I'm just going to delete the black and white layer since we have not even used it in this tutorial this is the before after before after so I feel like we should work on the image quite more so I'm just going to create a stamp visible layer by hitting shift alternate command E on the keyboard and it is going to create a stamp for all we have done on the image and every process is going to be merged into this layer and come and get the spot healing brush tool and just click on this tiny thread to get rid of it so like I said I always prefer to do the eye whitening uh, later on so just come back to a filter and come to the camera roll filter so I'm just going to do the eye whitening and uh, one final adjustment to this image so that we can learn about how to maybe export and get the best out of uh, the image after doing the retouching so come and zoom into the eyes command plus and hold down the space bar and click left click to move adjustment brush tool and now we have to set it to give us the best results so since we have yellow in the white area of the eye just come and move this brush towards the opposite of yellow which is blue so I think negative 25 is fine and we have some greens in the white area the opposite of green is magenta 
move this towards the magenta i think at around 60 we are good to go and simply brighten those white areas by five and as the whites by five so we have to desaturate the rest of those random colors so negative 60 is fine so simply left click and paint through only what you feel should be white in the white area of the eye so just come click and paint in those areas and you can see that the eyes have been whitened and this looks nice and beautiful so just come and hit ok to open the image back into uh, Photoshop and I know this is taking a while trying to load here and there but I'm just going to fix that later on after this tutorial so I think we are done doing the eye whitening so the next thing I want to do is adding that kind of black or intensity to this image and in order to do that I'm just going to come to the selective color and click on it and I just want to intensify on the blacks in the image so that the image can pop even more so come to selective color and drop down and look for blacks so click on the black icon and just move the blacks up so I think at around 12 we are good to go so our image really pops even better so this is the before after before after so basically this is how I do retouch my half or full body images and the next thing is going to be exporting this image the best way and so that we can have a very sharp image after doing the skin retouching so you don't want to mess up everything after you have retouched the image so just come to file and come to export and come to export as so when come to export as you have to choose the format in which you want to save your image so you have to choose the best settings for your image so for the format of course i prefer to export a jpeg file because this is supported by most social media platforms and most websites so format jpeg and the quality of course i prefer 100 percent so since we want photoshop to add some kind of artificial sharpening rather to the image come to where it says resample and when you click and drop down you can see we have various options so for a sharper image i'm just going to come and click on by cubic sharper so that photoshop can really sharpen the image better and we have a sharper image so for those people that usually encounter a problem of having maybe color changes or a color shift after you have been able to save the image or post it on social media this is the option that you have to check in order to encounter or counter that problem so just come and embed color profile and also convert to srgb and that is going to help you solve that issue and after this is done loading i'm just going to come and hit the export icon so just leave it to load and you'll see that you have export and hit export and now you can choose a location where you want to save your image so I'm just going to save it on desktop and i'm going to name it maybe full body retouch i think this is better and now hit save and the image is going to be saved and after it has been saved it is automatically going to close this window and basically this is all for today's tutorial and if at all you have learned something new don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching from this channel for the very first time ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching i'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating